eight days in the middle of Sweden. Arctic conditions. Miles from anywhere. Could you survive? Gloucestershire 7 Sound. Monday. Acclimatisation with snowmobiles. We've travelled about an hour since we last spoke to you in a minibus to head um, even closer to the Norwegian border, I think, uh, to a, a little settlement which just hires out uh, some snowmobiles. And uh, to my right at the moment, looking across a frozen lake into the forest and uh, up into the to the mountains in the northern part of Sweden, it's just absolutely gloriously beautiful. Uh, so we're all just kitting out now, putting all, all our uh, um, what's weatherproof stuff and, and making sure we're all warm enough before we head on to the snowmobiles. And last night we told you, oh, I told you this morning, last night's temperatures were down to at minus 26 and if you get on a snowmobile and do about 40 miles an hour on a snowmobile that makes with the wind chill factor the temperature's down to minus 54 Tuesday, play day two, cross-country skiing, and the hard work begins. We learned how to cross-country ski, and that was a skill uh, I found quite difficult to start with. I eventually picked it up later on in the week, uh, but it was exhilarating. You're going at a, uh, just above walking pace. You're covering uh, some distance on these skis, but actually it was, uh, was, was more stable and more steady in deeper snow because the, st the skis covered a greater area and you didn't sink. Wednesday, survival phase. I'm up for a challenge. We packed our bags for our first day of the survival element of this, and I think we've had Ollie holiday camp up until now. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Um, we're in the middle of nowhere, just next to a lake, a frozen lake, and we've got a 20-man tent, and it's a question of fending for yourself. We've, uh, you know, we've got our rations, mm. uh, which, you know, after not eating for uh, 12 hours, tastes gorgeous. Thursday, survival phase. How are you? Um, well, I've had a better night's sleep. Um, put, put it this way. Uh, we've lent loads of trees up against each other and slept under them mm. in, in below zero temperatures um, with only a campfire to keep us warm. Have you done lots of cuddling? Because obviously body heat and stuff. Um, well, it was, it was suggested that we do that, but it's funny, and nobody has actually done it. Uh, we know each other fairly well already, but not that well. Not just yet. You know, we're, we're willing to let each other die, uh, but we don't want to we don't want to touch each other. <laughs> Well, I suppose that the, the whole point of the exercise was living in an igloo, so mm. we had to do that at least once. And so um, what we'd done earlier on in the week was to build a huge mound out of snow. And it was kind of like a cocoon. And once that had set to ice, the point was then to hollow it out. And that snow hole became our accommodation uh, for the last night of our survival challenge. What was that like, sl sleeping in that? It was weird. You'd expect it to be really cold, mm -hmm. really cold. But once you've got sort of 11 people lined up uh, next to each other, literally shoulder to shoulder, um, sleeping, and you're inside a sleeping bag, and inside that you, you'd be in a bivy bag as well, which keeps the heat in. It actually was the warmest of all three nights that we had out, I think, until the morning when your body temperatures dropped enough mm. because you've not done any work. You've been lying there all night on ice. <laughs> um, the, the hardest bit that night was, was staying awake for your candle watch. You had to make sure that the candle was still alight throughout the whole night. Because obviously the candle, the flame uses oxygen. As soon as there's no oxygen, the flame would go out. Yeah. Not only would you have no light and a certain amount of heat, but also you wouldn't have any air. Mm. So it was important then to make sure that the air flowed through, uh, through the, uh, that particular shelter going. Friday, the light at the end of the tunnel. We've just quite possibly had the worst night we have ever, ever had. But we're back in the cabin. We had an early morning wake up call. We were up at 5.30, so that's 4.30 your time. Um, we packed it out of, the, out of the snow hole. We got all of our gear out there and we're back up for breakfast to the cabin now. Uh, so we're looking forward to today. Um, so the, the survival element is finished. 
ended up um, uh, playing around with, with huskies and, and, and they actually dragged us around a frozen lake which was just fantastic after that we set up the hot tub we boiled the water in the hot tub for the last day and we just had uh, a lot of fun the friends that we made throughout the course of the week it was there was nothing better than spending a bit of time in a, in a hot tub then just messing about having a game of cards having a quick drink at the end of the evening and just socialising with those people you've become very close to Saturday it can't be the end can it I've got to quickly mention uh, Nigel, uh, Johnny, Richie and Claire as well. They are the trainers from Intrepid Expeditions. They have been fantastic. They've been friends, they've been teachers, they've been um, uh, confidants, they've been, they've been people who you not only can you go to if you're feeling particularly down, but also if you want to have a bit of a laugh. Holiday is not an experience it is, and yes, it is a challenge. Have you had a nice time? If you'd asked me that two days ago, I would have said no. Mm. If you'd asked me that yesterday, I'd have said yes. If you'd asked me that an hour and a half ago, I'd have said something that you'd have to bleep out. <laughs> right. And now you're asking me now, I probably would do it again. We're looking for volunteers to take part in this once-in-a-lifetime trip. Places are limited and filling fast. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.